Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. This sermon is called, It's an Inside Job. Let's pray. Father, I praise you and thank you for what you're about to do, how you're about to speak and how you're about to move. God, I pray that you just permeate the atmosphere with your presence. Um, I'm not Rachel for these few minutes we have together. I'm, I'm yours, God. I just avail myself to your, to your glory, God. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, this sermon is called, It's an Inside Job. Um, I was reading... Uh, the book uh, called Enough, I Re Enough Already by Valerie Bertinelli. If you guys don't know what who that is, she was on um, One Day at a Time, that show way back when she was one of the sisters. And... Um, she was also on Hot and Cleveland with the with the late great Betty White and a couple other characters. And she all but my favorite role to see her in, which he didn't mention it which he didn't mention in the book was Gloria from Touch by an Angel. Uh, the techie uh, angel um, for the 2000s. It was awesome. Uh, Touch by Angel was one of my favorite shows way back when. It was about the three angels that would intervene in real life situations and um, help people. Help people. It was an amazing show. It was with uh, the late great um, Della Reese, the late great John Dye, uh, Roman Downey, and and uh, for one season, Valerie Bertinelli. Um, so I was reading Valerie Valerie's latest book called Enough Already, and. In it, she talks about um, finding finding joy and the struggle with her weight and finding joy in the most simple, finding joy in the simple things. She also chronicles um, her relationship with her late ex-husband. Um, Eddie Van Halen. Now, I didn't even know. This is how clueless I am about celebrities in their lives. I didn't even know that she was married to Eddie Van Halen. Uh, I knew who Eddie Van Halen was. Like, I'm not a metal fan, but being a metal fan as I am, I've heard of Van Halen, of course. I don't know their music well, because I'm not a heavy metal fan, although I am a music fan, so I've, I've heard the name. I'm not familiar with that music. But I learned from her book she was married to Eddie Van Allen for years. And the kind of um, post-marital relationship they had was was incredible. They were still best friends, although... They were both married to other people for a time. And even it, when they got divorced from those other people, uh, they were still close friends. And they have a son, Wolfie Van Halen, who is also a musician now. And um, they t she talks a bit about her son and seeing... Uh, her ex-husband, whom she called Ed, uh, who was known um, at, 
to other people as Eddie Van Halen was uh, um, uh, she chronicled basically her her journey through accepting herself and finding joy and finally accepting herself. She said she used to obsess about her weight going to the scale every morning and then feel bad and cheat on diets and all that. And then she said she went to Italy uh, a few years ago and then when she was in Italy she didn't even think about her scale, she didn't think about the diet, she just enjoyed food. And that began her journey of learning how to find joy in food again. Because she, she loved food, but it, it became like kind of her worst enemy and her, and her best friend at the same time. And she chronicles that journey. When, when reading this, I was, um, I thought about how we, we find joy in superficial things, like we find joy in who we're dating, uh, who we're sleeping with, who our friends are, uh, what we drive, what we do, what we, you know, achieve, and I was thinking about about all this, and the Lord, and the Lord whispered to me, it's an inside job, and when I was thinking about this sermon, um, he said, I want you to tell them it's an inside job, that everything that they're searching for, everything of real value, not external value, but internal value, is an inside job. He's like, you want peace? Well, it's an inside job. You want joy? Well, it's an inside job. You want content contentment? It's an inside job. You want friendship? It starts as an inside job. He's like, the seed of everything real starts from the inside and sprouts out. Um, you hear the saying, it, it's, it's what's on the inside that counts. Well, that saying is true. Um, not only true, it's essential. But we, we tend to say these things, but we don't really believe them. Now, the Lord is coming today for what's on the inside. The Lord is seeking to get closer to his children. Um, we've, we've been for too long just seeking things and seeking stuff and seeking happiness and seeking all that stuff in the wrong places. We think we 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 think some of us think external things will make us happy, but external things will go away. Money will go away. The cars will go away. That person you had sex with will go away. That, you know, that job promotion could go away. But when you start from the inside of yourself, whatever's on the inside never goes away. The Lord today wants to do some inner work on your life. And last night when I was ruminating on this sermon and what to say, he said, some people under the sound of my voice right now, they're running. And he's saying, 
they need to stop running and stop being afraid of what's on the inside. They need to stop running from their pain. They need to stop running from what hurts. They need to stop running from what angers them, what upsets them. They need to stop running from the trauma and deal with it, whether it's through counseling, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through forgiveness, whether whatever, they need to deal with it. A lot of people medicate problems. They don't deal with them. They medicate problems by drinking. They medicate uh, problems by drugging, by sex, by sexing and sexting and all of this, by shopping. You can medicate a problem using anything. You can medicate a problem using Netflix. We often think of uh, drinking and drugs to medicate problems. But you can medicate problems with anything. You can just drown out your problems by watching Stranger Things on Netflix or, you know, shopping for that purse on Amazon or, sh or over eating. You can, you can use a medication for anything can be medication, but you know the problem with medication, without dealing with the root cause of things, without dealing with where things started, after the medicate, you've, you've taken the medication, it's anesthetized you, it's done its job, the root pain, the root fear, the root, the root insecurity, it's still there. And God is calling for you to deal with what's on the inside. Because without dealing with what's on the inside, the outside things won't, won't give you peace. And the thing about dealing with what's on the inside first is that when you get those outside things, the they will, they will, um, have, have meaning, and that if they go away, it won't matter so much, because you have peace on the inside, so if you lose your car, oh well, you'll get a new one, but if your car is your significance, and you lose it, you, not only you you've lost your car, you've lost your you've lost yourself. When we put significance on anything on the outside and we lose it, we've lost ourselves. Because significance is connected to self. So wherever you put your significance, you put yourself. So if you put your significance in your car, your job, your relationship, your, you know, whatever, your bank account. If you lose that, you lose yourself, your career. And I know I've heard that many preachers do this. Sometimes even preachers put their significance in their sermon or how big their church is or how big their ministry is. So when they lose it, they've lost themselves. But if you put your significance in God, you'll never lose him. You'll never lose anything. You could take away everything. You could take away your church can burn down tomorrow, but you can still have yourself. And then when you have yourself, you'll, you'll just pick up and go on. It will not be easy to pick up and go on, but you won't lose your, your soul because you'll have, um, you'll have 
Christ in your soul and your spirit. And I think you need to put significance on the internal things rather than the external things. External things are nice. They're wonderful. It's wonderful to be financially stable. It's wonderful to have a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's wonderful to have all those things. But we know that it's wonderful, but we know that ultimately to put our significance in those things will cause will cause heartache, will cause pain. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. They're putting significance more in their Instagram and Facebook rather than they're putting significance in God, in peace, in love, in joy, in the things that don't go away. All those external things, Facebook likes and Instagram likes and Twitter follow follows and Snapchat things. Um, they're wonderful. It's wonderful when you feel val validated. And it's important to a, a certain extent. But do not put significance in anything external. Because if you putting significance in anything external means you put weight to it. Anything you put weight on can break. And if that external thing that you put significance on breaks, you lose yourself. And the Lord says today, I'm redeeming you. The Lord says, in this moment, I'm redeeming you. I'm redeeming everything you put significance on. I'm, I'm getting rid of it and redeeming you. Some of you have lost yourself. Have lost your, the sense of who you are. Because that thing you put significance on that fleeting thing um, is gone and, and without that, who are you? Without whatever, you're still you. So if my camera breaks tomorrow, I'm still Rachel. If YouTube shuts down tomorrow, I'm still Rachel. If everything goes away for me tomorrow, I'm still me. And being me is enough. I think that a lot of people struggle, myself included, with knowing that they're enough. Brother, what you have is enough. Sister, what you have is enough. You don't need more or, or less than what you have. It's all well and dandy to improve yourself. I'm all for self-improvement. I'm all for uh, making yourself better or maybe learning something new, advancing in something new. But again, don't put significance on that. You are enough. What you have is enough. Who you are is enough. You have everything you need to do what God has called you to do. You don't need anything more. You don't need anything less. Yes, it's good to learn and grow and change. It's wonderful, but don't let that be your significance. Don't say, I, I need to do this because 
this will give you significance. Nothing will give you significance except a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when I say a relationship with Jesus Christ, let me break it down. I mean Jesus Christ is someone you, you can relate to, you can commune with, you can speak with, you can pour out your pain, pour out your joy, pour out everything. And he wants to relate to you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to know you. He wants to be friends with you. So that's what I mean when I say a relationship with Christ. Um, he wants to relate to you. Because a lot of people who say it's a religion and not, not a religion. Uh, they say it's a relationship, not a religion. Well, a religion is like, yes or no, I have to do this and I have to do that. It's not like that. A relationship with Christ is he wants to relate with you. He wants to get to know you. He loves you so much. And, um, he wants that with you. And from a relationship with Christ, there you get your significance. Because a relationship with Christ, people, never, ever, ever goes away. Everything else that you get significance from, your likes, your followers, your Instagram, it all goes away. But a relationship with Christ never goes away. And I was thinking of this too the other day. I was thinking that we don't really, I'm, I'm talking to the believers now, that we don't really hear the cries of people. We don't, we don't really hear the silent tears, the si silent crying the way people are reaching out um, to the world, for, to us for answers. You know, I heard, I heard somebody say one time about the song, What If God Was One of Us, uh, uh, we are not uh, to put God on the same level as human beings. In a way, you're right, God is king and whatever. But when I hear that song, I don't hear uh, people um, trying to put themselves on the same level as God or whatever. I hear a world crying out for God and trying to, they're trying to gain significance with all these things, but at the same time, they're crying out for God. They're they're doing, they're um, making songs about God without even knowing that that's God that they're longing for, reaching for. Um, they are they are crying out for God. It um, if you um, there's a song called The Higher Megaway. It's from the movie A Joyful Noise, and it it kind of um, takes all these secular songs and uh, brings them in into the kingdom. They change the words, and a lot of Christians would, would say, "What are they doing? Like they can't put God in that song." But what I hear from that is is they, they want something to hold on to. They're looking, but, but it seems like we're just too deaf as Christians to understand, to actually hear the cries of the world and respond. Like, we're just stuck in, I love the church, I really do, 
but I think sometimes we're just stuck in our same little Christian bubbles. Like we come to church, we spend a few hours and, you know, we take our little sermon notes with our sermon books and have our personal study time without seeing that the world is crying out and we we have the answers but we we are misguided on a way to bring the answers to people in a way that they can understand. What I what I admire about Jesus and his ministry is he he spoke to the people in their language um in the day that they were living in. He didn't, uh, like I said last week, you could really find, I don't think I I have seen, um, I don't, I don't remember if I, uh, if I saw a verse of Jesus being in the synagogue or Jesus sitting in a, in a temple service preaching. I, I, I can't even remember that. Like, maybe there was one time or something where Jesus sat in a temple, in a temple service and preached, but he was outside and he, he talked to people. Um, people would just gather to hear him speak. He would like, um, okay, today it would be like, he would be in a park. You know, I envision him in like being in a park and just uh, talking to people and people sitting on the grass, like, and just hearing this man speak about life and about love. I, I could envision him like holding up a cell phone and talking about uh, texting or and telling some neat story about uh, texting and liking it, likening it to mysteries of the kingdom or, or having Instagram pictures and, or, you know, likening Instagram to something cool. See, that's what he did. And I find that we're just totally, uh, uh, kind of deaf to, to what the world needs. And we are, um, and going back to talking about significance again, we, we have the true significance, and the true significance is Jesus Christ. And it's more than serving for a week or a day. It's a it's a lifestyle thing that the world is looking for. And I, I just see, I just see a ministry being done differently. I see, I see God raising up people that will, will do ministry differently. And I see just amazing things happening in the kingdom. Uh, saints, I believe the kingdom future is bright. I believe that uh, God is a, God is shifting things. God is turning things. God is raising up his unlikely his unlikely prophets to to minister his word in new and fresh ways. His word doesn't change, but his methods do. And I don't see so much, so many pulpits, but I, I, I see a lot of uh, converse, conversational preaching where, where um, it's more conversational than me talking at you. It's me talking to you. I think, I think the world has enough people talking at them. Uh, pe people need to start talking to other people. Um, 
to find out what the what their opinions are and what they're actually going through or what they're actually needing uh, from the body of Christ. You know, we spend all this time planning sermons or whatever, and we wonder why is it hitting. But maybe we should, we as preachers and ministers, should ask the, our congregations what do what do they what do they need or or what do they need to hear or what are they struggling with? I think I'll do that one day. Just post a question on Facebook. Uh, what are your top three um, concerns in your life? So I can just uh, get to where people are. Because what I, like I said last week, I want to see real deliverance. I don't want I don't want this drug drugy Christianity where we where we pet you up for for two hours. I want to see real change in people's lives. I want to have a ministry that fosters real drink, real change that brings that brings forth the life-giving, life-transforming, life-affirming message of Jesus Christ. Because there's so much death, death in the world, and people need the light of Jesus. And that's what I want to do with, with my ministry. And it starts with an inside job. There there are so many people in church right now hurting, struggling with all kinds of issues, all kinds of addictions, and we're not um, we're not fostering healing. We're fostering kind of a different form of drug abuse. Oh, uh, take this shot in the arm and. You'll feel good, and then when you get out of here, you get back to the same mess. I'm not into that. I want to see real change in people's life, real restoration, real hope. And I think that's the job of any church, not to just bring the gospel to people, but let the gospel work through people and for people. And the gospel just means the good news. And I think that's what God would have us do. So guys, I will see you next week. And I think God wants to perform a real inside a real inside job on the truth. And I think he's starting to shift us to where he wants us to be. Um, and I think, what I mean by a real inside job, I mean a real, like, he wants, he wants us to be whole from the inside out. He wants us to be whole holy, yes, set apart, but more than being holy, I, I sense the Lord saying, more than being holy, set apart for the kingdom, I want my children to be whole, I don't want them mired in the same mess that they have been for years, and he says right now that there is freedom available. There's freedom available if you only reach out and touch it. And he says, I know it's scary, but I will hold your hand and I will be with you through all of it. And you don't have to go through this. There is freedom available. You don't have to do whatever you're doing. Smoke whatever you're smoking. Sex whoever you're sexing. I'm... I'm here for real freedom. Shop wherever you're shopping to cover up whatever you're dealing with. 
He says, bring the light into the darkness. He said, bring the light into the darkness and don't be afraid. And he's like, people will judge you, yes. But in that judgment, know that I'm there. Know that they can't do anything to hurt you. Know that I'm with you. Know that even though whatever they say, whatever they judge you about may hurt you, know that I'm right there. And I love you so much. So even if they judge you, my love will cover your sin. My love will cover their judgment. My love will cancel out their judgment. He, he said, says right now, my love will cancel out their judgment. And I love you so much that it's hard for you to, for you to receive my love. But he's saying, you're deserving of my love. He said, I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you did it with, who you did it to, or whatever. You are deserving of my love. Say this after me. Say, I, Rachel Esdale, and then say your name, am deserving of God's love. I, Rachel Esdale, am deserving of God's love. If you're watching this on Facebook and YouTube, put in the comments, I, Rachel Esdale, am deserving of your love. Okay, put I and then put your name, am deserving of God's love. Put I and then put your whole name. I'm deserving of God's love. And say it until you believe it. Say it until tears come from your eyes. Say it and say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Thank you, Lord, for your, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to us in such a wonderful way today. We bless you. And we receive your love, God. And we know that uh, true significance comes from you. And Lord, help us to receive our true significance from you. And to know that what we're looking for externally is something that starts internally. That no external thing will give us what we're looking for. Only you can give us what we're looking for. And it's, you heard me earlier in this sermon talk about um, a relationship with Christ. If you would like a relationship with Christ, just pour out your heart to him, whatever that is. It's, it's, it's no magic words, no nothing. Just tell him where you are, wherever you are, wherever you sit. Just tell him wherever you are and wherever you sit. And then after you pour out your heart, if you need more in information, you can message me on Facebook and on YouTube. But when you're messaging me, just tell me I heard your sermon and I really want to know more about this God thing, just so I know it's you, and I don't, because sometimes when it's a stranger, I don't know that it's them, so I'm a bit weary of, you know, answering, because you get a lot of, I get a lot of uh, strange messages, so just tell me it's you, I heard your sermon, and I, and it really touched me. I would like to know more. I poured out my heart to the Lord. Uh, you can, you can just.
write to me and tell me, and then we'll go forward from there. Thanks, guys. Bye.